This is the Outrider 422, and it's the top of the line bike that they offer. It's built on a recumbent frame, as you can see, designed by KMX with this really comfortable seat. And we've actually got sort of an add on here, this little headrest, which makes it even more comfortable, and you can get that from KMX. Let me just jump into the specs of the bike to start out with. So, recumbent bicycles. They sort of create a more aerodynamic flow. They're a much more efficient way to ride a bike in general. They offer a lot of stability. You can see the gears here in the rear, just a standard cassette back there. And I really like these, these kind of tubes that they've got running along. This is fairly standard for a recumbent bike, but it just keeps the chain kind of out of the way, a little bit cleaner if, you're, if your legs brush up against it. Uh, and I, you know, I really appreciate the quality that this company brings to their bikes. I mean, you look at it, it's beautiful. Nice big disc brakes right there. Kind of pull on those Avid. Just a solid bike to begin with. And then what Outrider has done is built on this amazing drive system here. You can actually see right through here, it's belt driven. So that's gonna be a little bit more quiet. Um, just very solid. And, and these belts, more and more bikes are actually starting to use belt drive system versus chain. Um, it's not going to rust, uh, it just, you know, it's kind of like what your car uses uh, for like air conditioning and, you know, timing belts and stuff. But that's the motor right there, and this is a 2,000 watt motor. You're getting just tons and tons of power. Outrider says that this bike has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, and there's actually different settings that you can choose here on the LCD, kind of low, medium, and high, and low is street legal, um, of course, uh, you know, like 20, 20 mile per hour top speed. Uh, it's just neat that there's there's so much uh, customization going on with this bike. So the battery packs, it's 44.4 volt, about 50 amp hours. So this is like 2,100 watt hours, just enormous. You've got incredible range, and it comes with a bunch of different accessories, including like a load balancer that you can put in here. It's got a 700 watt charger, and I think the website says it's like two hours for a full charge. Um, I'm actually uh, viewing one here uh, from a friend who owns it, and he says, oh, it's like an hour and a half, and you can charge this whole thing. So you can imagine, we're talking about like 100-mile range, just a couple hours of charging. It's it's pretty awesome. And I guess getting back to some of the creature comforts, you've got like a nice little fender. It's got this rear rack. And, of course, safety is always an issue if you're going, uh, you know, 100 miles or whatever, trying to get to work each day. This thing has LEDs built right in. You've got the flag way up high. He's actually added some additional lights. There's this super bright canister light at the front, kind of strobe right now. And there's a bunch of reflection built right on. So you can see the reflectors on the front, got some reflectors on the rear, and these bags that come with the bike also have nice little reflectors. So that's kind of the overview. I mean, it's, it's an incredible machine. And when you pair the aerodynamic efficiencies, the stability of a recumbent bike like this, with that super powerful motor and that enormous battery, which by the way uses lithium iron phosphate cells, and they tend to have, you know, they, they provide more charge cycles than like other types of lithium ion. They're a little bit more stable as well, so if you're really gunning it, you're going a long way and you're, you're using a lot of that energy, um, they're, they're not necessarily going to have the same sort of like fire or overheating um, hazards, or at least they're known for for having uh, better qualities that way. So I'm just gonna you know, hop on and, and show this thing off a little bit. It offers a twist throttle mode here. So you twist that and it just takes off, uh, kind of like a little scooter. There's no pedal assist mode here. Um, but again, you kind of pair that with your pedaling and you can create some, some efficiency that way. I also like that they've got a nice sort of a chain guide up here. Almost doubles as a bash guard since that's, that's the first thing on the bike. Um, so. Anyway, here I'm going to pop off this lens and put on a wide angle. So the way you want to mount this thing is you kind of stand facing away and then back up and uh, just kind of sit down. There we go. You can kind of start pedaling like a normal bike, but of course you're kind of laid back. There we go. We got these nice mirrors here. Kind of looks like this. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm going up a hill right now.
Oh, boy. This thing is incredible. <laughs> Just the sense of speed. Um, it's, it's like instant. As soon as you twist that throttle, you know, you hear the kind of, kind of gearing up like that. Um, I just climbed a little hill with no problem. I've got to say, I'm, I'm really impressed. Now, of course, these are more expensive electric bikes. Uh, you know, we're talking like thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on which model you choose. But, the, you know, you've got so many options and being able to dial up the speed settings, having such a, an enormous battery pack, and, of course, this super powerful motor, it's, it's, a, it's a neat thing. I mean, you could really replace your car with something like this, and that's what a lot of people are doing. And of course, Outrider is known for, for doing really well at the Pikes Peak Race in Colorado. Uh, again, the aerodynamic efficiency of a recumbent bike uh, excels in that kind of condition. And the other thing I've noticed uh, riding this, so, you know, you kind of get used to this different seating position, but it's pretty comfortable. And the headrest does sort of help. It's a neat uh, addition that they've got on this one. Also, the fenders, um, you, can, you can get fenders for the front because as you're riding along, you, your elbows and stuff do get a little bit wet if you're, if you're going over. Of course, the rear, it's taken care of because you've got that nice uh, rear fender. So the way that front gear that I mentioned works is... You take your toe or your heel and you just click that little silver thing right there and, and that shifts it up here. So it's really cool. You've got a couple of different gear ratios up here and then nine back here. So you're really looking at that 18 speeds, which is it's pretty awesome. I've actually never seen something quite like this. Need to have that choice. You know, cruising around on this bike has been a lot of fun. It's really fast and, you know, you get up to speed and it's like, oh, you know, it's it's... Um, thrilling, I should say, but you still have that stability, and the seat offers a lot of give, but there aren't really any shocks on this, so I did notice, you know, if you hit something a little bit bigger, a pothole, it's like, you know, you, you, you it kind of jerks you a little bit, um, but again, that sort of leaned back position, you're not necessarily slumped over your neck and back, take the impact differently, and I guess any bike is going to have, you know, some of that, there's, there's a little bit of a trade-off, so overall, this is just a lot of fun. This bike is, I don't know exactly how to communicate it. It feels different than riding a normal bike. Uh, and it, of course it offers a lot of pros and cons. I would recommend, you know, trying a regular recumbent bike and then considering the benefits that this gets you, which is really the range and the higher speed. And it, it becomes more like a vehicle. You can carry quite a bit of weight on the back of this. I think Outrider says 250 pound um, is what they recommend for the rider. The bike itself is 100 pounds to begin with, and you want to think about how you can store this. It's going to be a little bit harder to transport in your car or, you know, on a, a normal bike rack, and how you park it at uh, at bike racks in public places. You know, you trying to lock the frame and just thinking about keeping this thing protected given that you've spent so much, you know, on it to begin with. Um, but that's, that's it. That's the uh, Outrider 422 Alpha. For more info on this and other electric bikes, check out electricbikereview.com. I'll see you there.